via telephone delegate Chuck Hurst joins us. Uh, Chuck, we, we just had uh, apparently a distant relative of yours, who is now the executive director of the Stubblefield Institute, Ashley Hurst, with us in studio. So we're having the Hurst family reunion going on here right now. It's been a while since we've had one of them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one I've been invited to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, we, and to be honest, Rob, we kind of invited ourselves. That's true. We're those <laughs> guests who show up late and stay late. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. They're, they're quite often, they're the fun ones. Yeah. yeah. Well, sure. They don't let you clean up in time, though. Uh, Chuck, will the for, biggest question is, will the governor be on time for his speech tonight? <laughs> that's my biggest question. <laughs> I'll, I'll speculate he'll be on time or fairly close. How's oh, that? I like that. I like that. The governor has said he's got uh, a big announcement to make during the State of the State. And the speculation is it would be a 50% cut in the state income tax. What do you think? Is that it? Well, I, I, I actually expect that he will announce uh, something about a income tax cut, uh, probably a fairly large one. I, I, I'm, I would venture to guess 30 to 50%. So, yeah, I, I would say that you're in the ballpark with that. Do you know if that's going to be an immediate or a phased in? I do not know, and, and uh, I'm not sure what the governor. I mean, the governor throws surprises on us all the time, so I'm not sure what, how, how, how his uh, plan will be. Uh, but whatever his plan is, doesn't mean that's what the plan will end up be. End up when it comes out of uh, out of the House or the Senate. Chuck, were you able to listen last Friday when Roger Henshaw was on talking about this? I, I did not catch it all, but yes, I, I I did tune in. I caught part of it. Yeah, that he said Roger said he's very much supportive of it, uh, but uh, it's a, a and he views it be something probably more than one for full implementation, uh, something more than one year, and probably something less than five years. So that one to one to five, one to four and a half years is something he would anticipate. So, yeah, and 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 I would expect that. I mean, to, to do it all in one shot, uh, I think you're talking about 2.1 or 2.2 billion dollars. So that's uh, that's a that's an extremely extremely heavy lift. Uh, and can, can so we, I, I I would expect that if it does come to that big of a cut, it'll be it'll be it'll be over a period of time. Yeah, and uh, picking up on that, uh, and Jason Barrett was on discussing these numbers a few days ago. And as I understand it, uh, we have um, uh, a revenue uh, something like six to seven uh, hundred thousand, uh, six seven. Uh, hundred million dollars a year as of surplus but yet a full implementation of a 50 percent tax cut would be on the order of a may of a billion dollars so there would be a shortfall on a annual basis and for the short term you could full that uh, uh cover that shortfall with our surpluses but on the long term you'd have to bring in more revenue have you been involved in these discussions at all chuck of how you'd address that problem Nothing really in depth, but but one thing that I do see, um, it doesn't get talked about much, but but to to me, it it kind of makes sense that in the next couple of years, our revenue stream is going to increase when uh, when some of these big manufacturing companies and big deal big uh, announcements that's been made in the past year when when they come online like uh, Newcore in uh, uh, the uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, right there in uh, in my district, uh, uh, commercial I think it was Commercial Metals is the name. Yes, yes, CMC. Yeah, um, and, mm -hmm. and, and and there's a there's a number of other, number of other ones that's in the works that they're not up and running yet. And I don't know what the numbers will be of of revenue that comes to the state from them. But um, you know, when you're talking about big entities like that, it, it, it's got to be many, many millions of dollars. So. Um, I don't hear that talked about much, but but that's something that I see that that will be a, a big help going forward uh, on that. And and I, and I think the numbers that you discussed there, I think they were kind of low compared uh, on 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 the budget because I think we're expecting a a, a surplus this year of uh, I don't know one point five one point eight billion dollars or something. Yeah. We're on track for I think. Yeah, if you um, we, if we have surplus of that uh, that nature of that range, then we have no problem at all. But I also am fairly comfortable that we have some very smart and I'm going to say fairly conservative individuals looking at these numbers. So I doubt seriously if we're going to make a decision that's going to uh, bankrupt the state. No, I, I do not believe that we would get anywhere close to making 
any kind of a rash decision that 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 puts the state in jeopardy. I, I, I just I just don't see that happening. Too many people care. Too many people have concerns. Um, I, I absolutely don't see that happening. Yeah. Chuck, the real question here is what can get through the Senate? What have you heard? I and mean, we're going to talk with Senator Rucker tomorrow, Senator Blair tomorrow. But what do you think can actually get through the Senate? Well, you know what? I really don't know because that, that, that concerns me at the moment because uh, uh, just some of the chatter that I've heard about the Senate, they, uh, I, I get a sense that they want to revisit the uh, 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 personal income tax, business and equipment and inventory tax, uh, possibly as a workaround because we can't really do anything with it other than a workaround, which would be rebates or tax credits or something along them lines, um, which – if, 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 if that's the route they go, I have big concerns because, you know, the people just voted no on that. Uh, and my concern would simply be that uh, that would look like forcing something down to people's throats that they didn't want, perhaps. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if that's how it would go over, but I would have concerns about that. I don't think Senate President Craig Blair thinks the people voted no. In the conversations I've had with Craig, he believes the people were misled. And we're, we're, we're frightened away from that vote by false information. Well, there's, there's, no, there's no question there was some of that. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know how much. Um, there was no question people were confused, didn't understand. Um, uh, no question about that. I mean, I was seeing that all over Facebook from comments people were making all the time. Uh, you know, they, they went from comments that if this passes, this will allow the legislature to raise our car tax to whatever they want to do. And and I even tried to explain it to a few, and I thought they understood. And next day, I'd I'd see they were back on the bandwagon again. That it would uh, it would it would allow the legislature to do things that absolutely it did not. So, um, yeah, there was a, there was a lot of confusion there. There's no question about that. Um, the the optics though. And, and what, whatever the people believe or thought or understood could be one thing, but the but the optics could easily be played out that uh, the people didn't want this, and uh, and um, you know the optics could end up looking bad. So, what else um, do you expect the governor to address tonight in his speech? Oh, I, I would expect he'll talk about how good the state's doing. Um, you know, uh, perhaps uh, mention some of these big big business deals that have happened with the state and maybe some promising ones uh, in, on the horizon. Um, other than that, I'm not really sure. Uh, he's my impression. He seems to be his own guy and uh, he, he can, he can lob anything out at any moment. I think <laughs> <laughs> that's an understatement <laughs> such as a silver platter full of, <laughs> if you know what, yeah, well, you know what? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was kind of a surprise. That, 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 that surprised me. <laughs> At least that you can smell it before it arrives, so you know something like that's coming. Uh, Chuck, how much attention will be paid to, to DHHR in tonight's address? Any idea? Um, I do not know how much attention will be paid in, in, in the governor's address. I do know that the, the legislature, is, there's a lot of buzz about uh, DHHR right now in the legislature. And PIA, uh, is there quite a bit of buzz about that as well, Chuck? Um, I've heard some, yes. Uh, not near as much as I've heard about DHHR, though. But, yeah, P PEIA, that, that absolutely is a concern amongst many. Um, but uh, DHHR is, seems to drown out a lot of stuff at the moment. Is the is the buzz on uh, on the uh, down in Charleston uh, to accept the McChrystal report uh, at face value and go ahead and start taking some action, either uh, 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 dividing into three or four different groups or keeping it as one one organization? Do you have any sense at all what uh, uh, what the uh, uh, your fellow delegates are, are, are leaning? Which way? I have not really heard in-depth talk. I just know that, uh, uh, you know, DHHR has talked about quite a bit. Um, I, my sense, I, I would suspect there will be some, some – I, I, I suspect there will be definitely discussions about some sort of breakup, I would think. 
what that looks like. I, and, and like I said, I've heard no real particulars. That's just kind of my, my gut feeling there. Uh, but uh, I, I think and, – and, and I don't know a lot about the DHHR issue – but uh, I, I do know it's an awful big agency, an awful lot of money, and um, uh, seems to be very, very, very hard to manage. And, 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 and just my personal thoughts are that when something gets that big, it becomes easy for the different factions or the different parts of the agency to squirrel money away or uh, maybe squander money even. Um, I'm not quite sure, and I'm not making accusations that they do that, but, um, you know, I, I, some of these big things, I kind of look at them along the lines of our, our federal government, and uh, it just seems like things get so big that they're just they become totally unmanageable, at least in any normal sense of man, being able to manage it. Have you had an opportunity to read the McChrystal report in terms of DHHR? I have not. Okay, Chuck. Uh, uh, Speaker Hanshaw has made some changes and some promotions, and one of those promotions involved you to a chairmanship position. Yes, I, I am now chairman of uh, Natural Resources Committee. Um, in fact, uh, I've only got a couple of minutes after this phone call is done, and I've got to be in chairmanship training. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what, what, have you been to one of those classes yet? What's that like? No, I have not. So, so it, 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 that, that's kind of all new to me. All right, here's how it works. The people you agree with, you let speak. The people you don't agree with, you tell them to shut up. Uh, well, I kind of understand a little bit of that. <laughs> so, 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 so Rob is a natural to be a head of chair, a chair of one of the committees. <laughs> Quiet over there, Stubblefield. You're out of order. Rob, 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 would, Rob would be great down here, I think. We need to get him to West Virginia. We'll get him in office. <laughs> Uh, Chuck, t- tell me about uh, the committee and what kind of work you expect to be doing in any legislation you're uh, considering this upcoming session for that. Uh, for natural resources? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, no, Nothing really big that I'm aware of at the moment. Um, um, I, I do know that there's several bills, uh, probably at least three or four, that that are going to be come, come to the committee uh, for consideration of uh, basically about uh, free hunting license for certain, uh, I think there's one perhaps for first responders, and, and this is just a, the talk that I hear. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not no bill that I've seen yet, and uh, probably probably one for uh, some sort of a free hunting license for uh, some sort of vets that might be, dis- I think, disabled vets. Um, uh, other than that, I'm not really aware of anything else. You know, nothing else really on my radar at the moment. But that after today, that's apt to change. There will be probably 500 or so bills introduced today mm-hmm. uh, when we go into session. I'm going to ask you the uh, the Brad Knoll question here, and that is regarding a raffle range in uh, in the county. And I understand you probably have an ally with the new delegate Mike Hornby down there now about this. Well, the the, the rifle range actually doesn't require legislation. Um. And I have been working with the Department of Natural Resources. I, I actually I started on that issue uh, my very first session down here, and um, uh, took a little while to get the to get the ball moving a little bit. And then uh, the director, I met with the director. Actually, met up home with the director, and, and we discussed it. And uh, um, uh, it was kind of put in the works to start moving forward, looking at it. And it was laid into the hands of a regional bi- one of our regional biologists up there, and I just didn't follow up with it for a while. And then when I did follow up with it, and that was after the new director was in place, and uh, the bi- biologist that was kind of in charge at the point he had passed away suddenly, and it just all kind of fell by the wayside. And uh, uh, of course, with the new director, I. I texted the new director and he got back with me within about an hour and let me know what happened. It fell by the wayside and he was bringing it back up to the top. So it's, it's being worked on, um, being looked at, uh, just the wheels of government move very, very slowly. Chuck, to get a sense of the, uh, domain or the reach of the natural resources, I assume water and water resources fall under your committee. Uh, how about natural gas? What about the slug, uh, slug pits from, uh, the old, from mining operations? Do all of these fall in the natural resources? No, not really. I do not believe so. They, they end up, uh, in, in, 
through other committees. There's, uh, um, I, and, and I forget the names of them, but I, I, I was on, um, I was on the, was on the one committee and in interims, I was also in on the joint committee for water resources. I forget what the actual committee was called in the house, but the joint committee was water resources. Uh, a lot of that, a lot of that stuff with water and everything, the old mines are hang, uh, actually falls into that committee. Okay. Mm-hmm. Chuck, one of your committees I see is jails and prisons. Yesterday, we spoke with Berkeley County Council President Jim Whitaker and the County Administrator Alan Davis, and they spoke, hopefully, of the state potentially taking over the jail fees bills, which for Berkeley County are right in that $3 million a year neighborhood. Any chance that happens? Um, I honestly don't know. Um that was actually talked about when, uh, uh, as part of dealing with uh, purple per- personal property tax, if if that amendment had passed, but uh, but that was you know something that that we was looked that was being considered to help make counties whole with the revenue that they were going to lose. So, um, it, I'm, I'm sure it's a topic, it's a consideration that's going on, and, and uh, it may be something that we that we talk about or or uh, look at in that committee but that committee has not actually started up yet so i I really don't know much uh uh, about that actually as far as whether the committee's looking at it or how deeply they're they're looking at that issue chuck over the years home rule for the counties has been mentioned or discussed is it still do you hear any buzz about that uh in charleston now uh, since I've been in the legislature, just occasionally you hear just a a little blurb here and there about it. Uh, I, it doesn't it doesn't seem to be a a big issue at the moment. Uh, I'll put it that way. I, I, I mean, I've heard it mentioned before, but not not a lot of discussion that that I've been privy to. You're also on workforce development, and I think the state has been pretty progressive in terms of workforce development and ties in with community colleges and uh, technical colleges and such along the way here. Chuck, what do you see in 2023 legislation-wise to further along workforce development in West Virginia, which continues to attract these major employers and is going to need skilled people to work at these places? Well, one one thing, uh, I was just in committee yesterday, uh, at my last education committee, the Joint Education Committee, and there's uh, uh, dual enrollment, uh, which has, uh, I guess, has to do with uh, while you're in high school, you can be taking some of these courses so that when, when once you get out, uh, you go to college then and you get your degree much, much faster. And, ch- and less uh, expensively, too. Yes, and less expensive, absolutely. But that's in place now, is it not, Chuck? I know both Shepherd and Blue Ridge have this program with uh, the high schools in Berkeley and Jefferson, I think also Morgan County. Well, if, if it's if it's in place or being used, um, apparently it needs some, some tweaking, I, I, I believe, that, uh, from the presentation that we got yesterday, uh, or, or there's some big, possibly substantial changes being looked at to to make it better yeah i uh i don't know yes i don't know but i know it's very active uh i'm not sure how well it's been funded uh because they continually come to other other funding sources such as the east western foundation and other places asking for funding on an annual basis and and, and that may be that may have been the gist of the committee why why we were hearing all that information because it may have something to do with more perhaps more funding i'm, I'm not sure i don't, you know, I don't want to say that it did, but uh, but that very well may be what it's about. Chuck, you have one of the prized seats on the Finance Committee uh, this session, and that's one of the places where a lot of delegates uh, really want to be on finance. Uh, tell me, in, in regards to, to your role there, uh, what influence do you have in those meetings, uh, and uh, what would you like to see the committee aggressively pursue? Well, my influence would be one of, I guess, about 25. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, my influence would literally be, you know, the one voice, uh, you know, can, can would it be, you know, I guess it would boil down to it. If I have a, a, a belief or a thought, can I convince others to the, that, uh, that my idea is a good idea? Uh, so we'll just have to see how my influence pans out. Uh, 
Uh, other if, than that, I'm really not quite sure that I have any other influence. Do you think the approach that the state is taking towards tax cuts is the appropriate approach? In other words, the governor may propose a 50 percent, 30 to 50 percent tax stating of tax cut. Or would you really like to see a whole major overhaul of the entire tax system in West Virginia? Sort of rebuild the robot. Oh boy, wouldn't that wouldn't that be great to do that? I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think you'd ever get a consensus on on what you've done there uh, on a on a complete overhaul. But but yeah, I I, I think that would be an would be an awesome uh, thing. But uh, I, I I don't see that coming into play. Have you? Uh, it, I'm sorry, Chuck. Go, go I, I was just going to say, at best, we're, we'll we'll pick around the edges or. or, or, or try to address some of it i'm sorry i did not mean to interrupt it uh but have you talked to mike carl over the years of his fair 55 plan which would be a total rewrite of our tax tax structure i have not talked to him personally about it um i i know i've heard him speak about it some um um and and i've heard others didn't care so much for his plan um, I'm not quite sure exactly where I'm at. I'd, I'd have to really look at his plan to actually understand it more. I just know that he's had a plan that I think he's promoted that for quite some time. Yes, he, he has. Yes, four or five years anyway. That's right. A lot of work into that one. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, thank you very much. Appreciate your time today. And uh, where will you be sitting when I watch the governor's speech tonight? And I'm trying to find Chuck Hurst. Where, where do they have you? I will be, uh, if, if you're from, if you're looking at the speaker, from the chamber, I would be on the right-hand side. I'd expect nothing less. <laughs> uh, probably just two rows from the back, about the middle there. I got I got moved back two rows. I don't know if that – some tell me that's a good thing. Others kind of think like, well, what would you do to get moved further away? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that means yet. So what, what you're telling me, Chuck, is you're, you're to the right of the governor is what you're telling me. <laughs> no, I would be to the left of the governor. <laughs> Are you sure? I would, be the, yes, I, would be, I would be out in front to the left of the government. All right. Very good. Chuck, thanks so much for your time this morning. As always, a pleasure, sir. Okay. Thank, thank you, guys. Best of luck, Chuck. Have a good day. Okay. You sure too. Bye-bye.